Hello my chariots, welcome to my channel. My name is Hope and this is Chariots Soul Tarot. My goodness, for my returning subscribers, it is so good to be back. I know I took uh, a little hiatus there uh, for a short minute, but I needed some time for myself. I did have a lot going on. Um, I do have a full-time job as well. That's been extremely busy. I wish I could post for you uh, on a weekly schedule, but it just became too difficult. So I am returning. Um, I'm going to ease into today's reading, okay, um, so that I can uh, regain feeling that energy from all of you as I perform the reading uh, and we'll take it from there. But I am so happy to be back. And I am uh, just thrilled that I'm able um, to take some time today to actually do this reading for you. As you can see, I'm in the Halloween spirit. So I do have some Halloween decorations uh, around. And you can choose from uh, the three piles that I have set up today. So today's reading is going to be, what does your person want you to know most at this time? Okay, so we'll get into it and see how they are feeling. Um, but before uh, we do that, I just, I just want to take a moment. Uh, if you're new to this channel and you like what you see, please uh, hit the thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, okay, <clears throat> and give it some love. Same for my returning subscribers, you know, continue to leave comments and be supportive to one another. I know, again, I can't be there uh, as routinely as I would like to be, but I am here. I've been thinking about you all and I'm excited uh, to get started. So if we take a look at the three piles that I have for you today. All right. Uh, this pile here is the witch and I'm also using cards from the Halloween um, Oracle by Stacy DeMarco. All right, so this is going to be pile one. Pile two, you are the jack-o'-lantern. So this is going to be your pile. And pile three, you are the ghost. Okay, so this is going to your pile. Now, take your time in choosing the pile. Uh, piles, do what you need to do. You may be drawn to more than one pile, and that's perfectly fine. That just means that there may be some messages in the other piles that you may need to hear. If nothing's resonating with you, if you feel that my energy is not connecting with yours today, that's perfectly fine as well. You can just kindly back out of the channel and go check out all the other amazing tarot readers that we have on YouTube. There's so many with their distinct style and intuition that they use to perform the readings. Um, Spirit always wants to connect with you. So if you don't find that today with me, I know you'll find it with someone else. OK, so why don't you pick your pile and then we'll get started. Hello, pile one. Okay, you were drawn to my little witch icon here. She's holding a little black hat as well. Um, so this is going to be your reading. Today's reading is what does your person want you to know most at this time? Okay, we'll be taking a look at that. Um, but before we do, before we get into the reading, you know, I always like to take time just to settle in and clear our energy. So that's how I want to begin this reading. So pile one, if you can take in a deep breath for me. And just relax. There are some positive affirmations that I would like you to say today in your mind as we're trying to connect. All right, so I want you to repeat after me, whether you say it out loud or inside. I release all negative energy from my body and energy field.
I lovingly let go of all energy that no longer serves me. I am surrounded by positive, loving energy. And I am rooted in the present moment and connected to the earth. And we're saying that to ground ourselves into Mother Earth's beautiful energy. All right, so what do we have here? So, you know, you chose the witch. I'm just going to put this little icon off to the side. And as I said, this is coming from the Halloween Oracle. And what I'm going to do is there's a little sort of like a small home at the start of this in the book um, uh, as a summary. And then at the end of the reading, this is I'll read from the book again to give you your advice. But you chose the witch, all right? And if you can see here, the earthly weaver of the worlds, okay, that is what's noted. Um, and we're talking about magic. We're talking about uh, change when we're, when, when we're talking about witches. So here it, it says, earth, air, fire, water, a woman lovely, a woman strange, weaver of the worlds, moon's daughter, witch, the catalyst for change. So, you know, there's something very unique and different about you, Pile One, that I feel that your person is drawn to you, okay? There's some sort of magic that you carry within yourself that I feel uh, your person picks up on, and because of that, uh, they feel, you know, quite drawn, that magnetic, fiery feeling that you can see going on here in this uh, witch card. So let's take a look at tarot and see what comes through today. I am using the crow tarot. And we're asking spirits. What does your person want you to know most at this time? I will end the reading. I want to use my beautiful amethyst pendulum to ask a question, a specific question that you have, okay, in regards to this person, this connection, this situation, and we'll see the way it answers for you, yes or no. Sometimes it doesn't like to answer at all, so that may be a possibility as well. Okay, so let's see what we have here. The Ace of Pentacles. The world. And the Ace of Wands, my goodness, you know, two aces with that major arcana starting off this reading. Um, let me get my little amethyst uh, wand here, points. Um, look, two aces, and, and what do aces represent? I always let people know that it's that opportunity, right? It doesn't mean that it's a guarantee with the aces. It's a beautiful opportunity that can arise if the situations are correct. And yet, it you know, what is nestled in between here? The world, completion, all right? Feeling that sense of completion. So, you know, the feelings that are coming through right now regarding your person and, and what it is that they want you to know, what they're feeling at this time is Boy, wow, do I wish that I had this opportunity to start something new. As I said, you know, they feel magnetically drawn to you. Um, you can have a very strong sense of intuition. Um, you may work well with energy. OK, when I'm looking here at the switch that, you know, you really can connect with this person's energy and they can feel your energy as well. All right. And because of that connection, I feel that, look, when we're talking about the world here, you know, yes, that can represent completion of a cycle. 
but you're looking at the two red infinity signs. So it's almost sometimes like here's this person wishing for this wonderful opportunity, wishing that they had the ability in this 3D material world to express this passion that they feel and that they have for you. Okay, they wish that they had this opportunity and yet somehow uh, there's this feeling that at this time, perhaps it's not the right time. And with this completion here, uh, representing that uh, the world card showing me with the two infinity signs that, hey, this is something that's going to go on forever. So I feel like there's this connection that you need to be aware of, that the two of you will always carry with one another, regardless of if you're together right now, uh, regardless if you're in a serious relationship, uh, if that can't be you know, I feel like spirits here saying today, well, but don't doubt the feelings. Don't don't doubt the energy. You know, don't we always say that energy never lies? You know, someone can be standing in front of you and saying one thing and the energy is so different um, than what you're picking up on. Or if you're having a communication back and forth with them and you're saying one thing um, and yet that energy um, is almost confusing you, right? I feel like sometimes you may have con uh, confusion when it comes to this person. Maybe they uh, say one thing and do another and it throws you off. And uh, yet when you connect with this person energetically, uh, it feels very different. So let's see what else we have. And here we have the five of pentacles. And here we have the eight of swords. And here we have the wheel of fortune. So, you know, I see that wheel of fortune mixed with the world card and Definitely this magic exists here. OK, um, and maybe you're trying to manifest change. You know, maybe you're really focusing on that and you're really you have been setting um, your intentions with this person and they are aware of it, which is causing them to feel that difference. Like, hey, do I need to do something different here? You know, I feel like they want you to know, like, I'm feeling differently. Um, I need to do something and I'm not sure what it is. I feel with this eight of swords here in the middle, you know, that's representing like a quick, fast, rapid uh, energy, you know, something quick and fast. Uh, this can just be showing me the connection from the world card that maybe the two of you connected immediately just you know, like it, you just clicked. Do you ever have that feeling with someone where you meet them and it just clicked? There's something fast and there's something rapid where you, you just clicked and things just really took off with you and your person in a matter of weeks. Um, and it happened fast. I feel with the wheel of fortune and the world card that there's unfinished business here that, uh, needs, you know, that's your person's feeling like we're not finished here. All right. I feel like they miss you as well with the five of pentacles. Um, I feel like they're missing out. You know, they feel as though they're missing out. You know, this confirming that ace of pentacles showing me that they would love this opportunity to start something in this 3D material world. You know, that I feel like that's what they think about most at this time. Um, and there's this sense of loss or missing you in some way. So for some of you, I could be feeling a, a no contact situation that's occurring right now. You know, with this rapid um case that we're dealing with when we're talking about the eight of swords it could be that they're looking now to come re-communicate with you okay uh reach out to you and communicates to you in some way uh, because again with this wheel of fortune i feel like 
they just feel that this is an energy of fate, you know, um, even if the logistics cannot be explained uh, at this time. Okay, so let's get one more set. What else, Spirit? What is Pile One's person thinking at this time? Seven of Cups. Temperance. Oh, and the Five of Swords. Let's take a look at the bottom of the deck. Ooh, the Empress. So you'd see that magic. Do you see the feeling that they have when uh, they can feel your presence? It's this Empress feeling, this abundance, right? It's it's this flow of abundance um, that they pick up on immediately. I feel like for them with the seven of cups here, confirming um, this five of pentacles and the ace of pentacles, there's that confusion of what direction to move in when it comes uh, to you specifically. You know, seven of cups can represent options. In this case, I feel like it's the options of what am I supposed to do here and how am I really supposed to connect? What is what? truly is the next move when it comes to this person. Do I actually try to make a change with this Eight of Swords or do I leave it to fate and see see what occurs? But there's this definite feeling with this Temperance card here. Look at this. You know, this is the perfect mix. This is about alchemy, okay? And it's about finding that alchemy. And I feel that's that energy that they felt with you there's that perfect blend that yin yang energy that's coming through here and i can also see since we're ending with this five of swords that you know it's possible that there's some sort of competition that exists whether it's on your side your person's side it could be very well both of you but when we look at this five of swords here it's showing me that this is a complex situation because other parties are involved there's other people that surround this connection that leaves your person feeling like this is almost impossible to try uh, to manifest, to actually occur, even though I feel that that is something that they would love. You know, they would love this opportunity if the pieces fell in to uh, the right place. And that's what I feel like they're struggling with at this time. There's there's some there's some sort of energy here that's involved when I'm looking at this five of swords, because, you know, it, it usually represents um, more more than, you know. Two people, you, you usually see three. OK, the fives represent change. And we're even talking about change when it comes to your energy, you know, the earthly weaver of the worlds. Uh, there's some sort of conflict or or maybe people are whispering in your person's ear that that may be trying to sway this person from from heading in this direction. But I do feel that there's something in their life that challenges them at this point. OK from um, being able to move on but the fact that you know we're ending with this oh my goodness and look at this we're ending on the bottom of the deck with the empress and the lovers oh my goodness and the sun shows me that they really have this feeling of love and adoration uh, adoration for you um a very strong connection um they have a lot of respect for you you know they almost put you on that that type of pedestal um where i feel mixed with this five of swords you know it's like goodness if i only met this person you know sooner um they feel that they could have a life of joy and happiness all right so before I read the summary from the book and end this reading, I do want to use my beautiful amethyst um, pendulum. 
All right. So pile one, I want you to think of your specific question that you have in regards to this person. And then I will ask for that answer. All right. So spirits, I'm asking for an answer for pile one's question, please. Okay, pile one. So whatever your question is, I am getting a strong yes for me. The energy in my pendulum when it swings vertical is that is a big yes. And I can feel the strength um, right now. Okay, in in the, the way the pendulum is swinging. So I feel very confidently whatever that question is, it is yes for you. Okay. So let's end this reading. I'm just going to read um, the guidance on the witch. I think it's nice too because they're talking, you know, they're giving a summary about the witch and how they've always had like a bad uh, PR rap, you know. They were always looked at negatively for years and years and years. Um, and it's not, I feel, until more recently that we can say that word and people aren't as uh, fearful of the word witch. Because here, again, we're, we're saying that the, wis, the witch is representing that catalyst for change. And really, when you think, where did witch come from? Well, back in the day... You know, witches were the healers of their communities. And, um, you know, they had knowledge because they were the ones that everyone went to when they were ill or sick or they needed something. And, and what were they using? They were basically going out and finding herbs and everything that is part of their land, okay, to help treat the, the people in their community when it needed. And somehow that turned into uh, a huge misunderstanding or misrepresentation, you know, showing darkness as well and, and labeling them as evil, which is very unfortunate because I feel that um, throughout their time, I feel that they were probably very helpful. Okay. And, and, this is definitely coming from the Celtic women, um, people in uh, the Scottish lands, also uh, dealing with witches. I mean, all over, we could look at all over um, certain areas that looked towards healers. Okay. But for the purpose of Halloween, we're looking at them as the weavers of magic and change. Okay. Okay. And this is through spells and rituals that they have learned and that they perform. So your advice for you today is holding the witch card means that you can weave your own change throughout your life. And the magic indeed is afoot. You must understand that you have power and it is real. It may also indicate that others may be threatened by your developing personal power and that they may not appreciate or like the changes in you as you grow. Be prepared for this and do not be discouraged. New friends and better opportunities will be attracted instead. So as I was saying earlier, I feel like maybe some people have some, you know, whispers going on in your person's ear because I do feel that this connection that the two of you have, this magnetic connection is, um, unique you know and that's how your person sees you you know they're mystified and they're very attracted to um, the magic that you carry within and because of that uh, people may be swaying them at this time okay um, for you yourself I feel like that advice to take is that you know you cannot please everyone and to continue to remain your as who you are Okay, you do you. Let's remember that. Um, do not be embarrassed for the beautiful, unique energy that you carry within yourself. Okay, 
and recognize that you do have power. You do have power within yourself to make the changes that are needed in order to further your life better. Okay. So that's what I want you to realize in today's reading. All right, my chariot. So I'm going to leave the reading here. I hope it resonated with you. Uh, thanks for watching. And I will see you again at the next reading. Hello, pile two. Okay, you were drawn here to the jack-o'-lantern. In today's reading, we are asking about your person and what is it that they really want you to know at this time. We can see how they're feeling. Um, before we get into anything, though, what I do is always like to take that moment to just focus and clear our energy. So before we get started, pile two, if you can take in a deep breath for me. And I want you to repeat the following affirmations, whether you say them out loud or within your mind. I want you to say, I release all negative energy from my body and energy field. I lovingly let go of all energy that no longer serves me. I am surrounded by positive, loving energy. And lastly, I am rooted in the present moment and connected to the earth. All right, so let's take a look, Pile 2. You were drawn to uh, the jack-o'-lantern, okay? So let me just read from the book. Um, this card is actually representing protection. So I feel like some sort of protection is needed for this uh, connection. All right, Um And here we have, oh, Jack, oh, Jack, let me carve my protection, shine your fire outwards, evil, rejection and reflection. So, OK, um, you know, there may be some toxic energy in, in this connection that you're dealing with that you are trying to break free from or. Maybe there's just a strong feeling of a lot of strain, okay, like just bringing you down at the moment. But let's take a look. Let's get into tarot and see what's going on, what, what it is that your person wants you to know most right now. Now, today I'm using the Crow Tarot. And I love the artwork. Um, in this in this deck, the pictures are lovely. So take notice to them. Let's see. Let's see what is on your person's mind. What they want you to know most at this time. I hope you all have been well, Pile 2. Staying healthy, happy, safe. The Hierophants. The Eight of Cup. Mm. 
then the three of pentacles. So I feel definitely that this is a long distance type of relationship that's going on here. That's that's what I'm feeling. And your person can feel the stress and the strain of that distance as well as you. All right. Um, I do feel like this is someone perhaps that have has walked away um, from this relationship. All right. From the situation. Um, there's this feeling that, um, again, I, I'm feeling a heaviness to this group. Uh, I do feel like there was some sort of choice here with the Hierophant card. Um, and, and look, when you look at this Hierophant card, here's one of the crows. And there's two other people, like almost like, and then in between that is a key, Right. As if wondering, like, who's who holds the key here at this point? So uh, it's possible that there is a third party type of a situation that is going on with your person or yourself. OK, um, that keeps this person um, at bay or keeps this person uh, away from you. As I said, I do feel for some reason that, uh, you know, we have the three of pentacles here. I feel that this person is just more um, in a state of waiting when it comes to their life. You know, and, and I do feel that this person thinks about you, but it's almost as if at this point um, you two have experienced something negative with one another. OK, and that's why I feel like the jack-o'-lantern is here for that protection. So it's almost like I actually feel for this group that I'm glad that we did those affirmations um, from the beginning of this reading, because I do feel that there's a lot of negative energy that I'm picking up on um, that needs to be freed. What else do we have here? Oh, look, here's the four of wands to complicating things. All right. So here's that 1111 card. We have the emperor here in the center. And we have the nine of wands. So basically, you know, I feel that, you know, your person is trying to keep their head above water. That's what I feel that's coming through. Um, it's interesting because I'm looking at this emperor and you can see the Aries energy. All right. Because the emperor does represent that Aries energy. You see the ram's head here sitting on this throne. And, and what is the emperor represent well they they certainly represent that divine masculine energy but it's also that aries energy you know they we're talking about power we're talking about wanting to be in control and authority so i feel like your person's just trying to uh remain above water and they are trying to be in control um, of their life with that comes a lot of stubbornness. Uh, they can have a bit of a temper, but I find it interesting how this crow looks towards this four of wands, recognizing this 1111 energy. And if you see the two crows down here, like look at how they're mouth to mouth. Um, they're kissing, you know, this is representing that uh, physical union. OK, uh, and I do feel with the hierophant here. You know, this is a relationship or a connection that never has had uh, that physical union between the two of you. So it is something that your person thinks about from time to time. But, you know, the nine of wands is here showing me that they're this wounded warrior. So you're dealing with a wounded warrior. I feel like this this is someone that's been through a battle. You know, and they're trying to stay afloat. They're really trying. They're not ready to throw in the towel yet. They're not ready to give up. But their situation, I feel, is very difficult. Like it's not it's not an easy one. Like so there's something that, you know, makes things difficult here. They're either surrounded by. Uh, 
uh, people that give them a hard time or they are someone that possibly likes to self-sabotage themselves, you know, with this this nine of wands here. Uh, talking about, again, that wounded warrior. Someone that wants to stand up and, and remain independent and feel strong. But yet at the same time, I feel like they've been through a lot. Um, sometimes uh, I feel like the two of you, there's an energy here where you may bring out the worst, the worst in each other, which is difficult. Because I do feel, Pile 2, that you love this person. But it may not be the healthiest form. Let me see what else we got here. We have the Six of Pentacles. Yeah, balance. Um, justice. We have the Ace of Wands, the Six of Pentacles, and the Three of Cups. So I feel, and let's look on the bottom here. Yeah, the Ten of Cups. So I feel like there's a, you know, your person struggles. I feel like they've been struggling and they're on this path of trying to, they want to get to this 10 of cups so bad. They're really looking for uh, this void to be lifted from their life. Like they, they're carrying this void that lacks some sort of emotional stability and they're really trying hard they, they want to get to this Ten of Cups, and I feel that um, it's very difficult, all right? And with the Three of Cups and the Ace of Wands here with this Six of Pentacles, you know, again, I feel like there's something off. You know, this isn't, you know, I don't know if there's a struggle here when it came to compromise, um, being fair to one another, I feel, is something that stands out. Like, were you truly fair to this person? Uh, did you give them the benefit of the doubt? Or were you a good listener or were you the opposite of that? Or, you know, is, is that you would listen to them and whatever it is that they were portraying, things that would upset you and just make you ang angry and want to lash out at this person. And in turn, you know, I feel like that's some of the toxic energy that I'm picking up on. The Ace of Wands is showing me, like, here is this opportunity um, to create something new, you know, something that is passionate to your person, you know, wanting that opportunity. Uh, but yet I feel like there are some lessons here in the way that uh, your person you know, is trying their hardest. And because of this Aries energy that I feel is sitting here like smack dab in the center of this reading, I do feel like your person has basically, um, I feel a strong denial. And because of that, uh, your person is, is taking matters into their own hands and dealing with the complications that they have surrounding them without getting you involved. Okay. If that makes any sense, they, they don't want, they feel that you're muddying the waters. Like it's too much for them to handle. Again, there's something here about uh, a craving and a need for emotional stability that I feel that your person is struggling with. And because of that, they just don't have the bandwidth at this time. You know, they just don't have that, uh, they're not capable to, I feel, give you what it is that you're looking for. And you've had very strong feelings for this person. I mean, with the four of wands here, you're feeling that connection, right? That possible, like, you know, is this a twin flame connection or is this person like uh, a soulmate? You know, part of that, that tribe, that family, you know, that where you feel like this person has just changed your life or you feel very different um, since meeting this person. And yet I just feel like there's a lot of heartache that um, is also associated with this connection. That's not making you feel your best. Okay. So you really want to watch out and you want to be careful 
um, when we're talking about, you know, being entangled with energy that can bring you down. So make sure that you are taking that moment daily to clear your energy and remove that negative energy that may be festering and filling your soul. All right. So before I read from the book, your advice regarding the jack-o'-lantern, I want you, Pile 2, to think of a specific question. I want you to, your question to be as clear as you can, okay? And you want it to be specific in regards to your person. And uh, let's see what the pendulum has to say. So, Spirit, I'm asking in regards to Pile 2 specific question, what is the answer to this question? Now, what's interesting is that I am getting a yes. And at the same time, there was a strong wobble, like it's shaky. Okay, and it still remains yes, but it's not a strong yes, okay? It almost wanted to stop, which I found interesting, and it was very wobbly. So I feel, you know, I don't feel that uh, it's a confident yes. There's some shakiness there. Um, I almost felt like that pendulum wanted to not answer the question, but it went ahead and did. So just be careful on whatever this yes is. It It's... I don't feel like it's a, a concrete yes. Like it's almost like it it depends on there's like other things involved that depends on the answer to the question that you're asking about. Okay. So let's read from the book on the jack-o'-lantern. And, and we realize that, you know, obviously the jack-o'-lantern has been a part uh, of Halloween, of Samhain, of Samhain for the longest time, um, you know, and it's these jack-o'-lanterns where they used to carve them. Um, they also carved other vegetables too, winter vegetables, and, and use, this is what was used to scare the goblins away that were roaming the wild during this time. Okay, so it, it's used as a form of protection. Um, and it was used to be both scary, to scare off the undesirable, undes um, and then also to light the way in the dark for people. So, you know, mentioning that carving jack-o'-lanterns today is just a, has become an art in itself during this time. I don't know if you ever catch any of the shows on TV when you watch them in the pumpkin carving contests. They're actually, they're quite amazing. Um, I love, you know, I love seeing the detail um, that these artists come up with and the creations that they come up with from using uh, the pumpkin. But, you know, the whole point of this card here today for you is know that you are protected and that you are capable of creating the life you want and the universe su supports you in this. Should Jack shine his light upon you? Boundaries are important to teach people how to treat us. And drawing this card indicates that you may wish to renew the ones you have or to establish new ones. So we're talking about boundaries here, you know, and that very well could be, especially how I'm looking at this six of pentacles. I feel that perhaps in some way, your person either crossed a boundary that they shouldn't have, or perhaps you have as well. You know, it could be a combination here of a, a toxic push and pull that I'm feeling where, you know, it's time right now to develop or establish new boundaries when it comes to this person and this relationship. All right, pile two. So I am going to leave the reading here. 
Um, I hope it resonated with you and uh, I look forward to having you at the next reading. Okay. Bye. Hello, Pile 3. Okay, you chose the ghost here, and this is going to be your reading. Today we are asking Spirit, you know, what is it that your person wants you to know most at this time? Before we get into any of that, any anything like that, if I can speak properly, um, you know I always like to take this time just to clear our minds so we can connect. So before I start the reading pile three, if you can just take in a deep breath. And just relax. Okay. What I would like to do, well, I want to put my tarot cards over here as well. I want you to repeat the following affirmations, whether you say them out loud or in your mind, it doesn't matter which, but I just want you to quietly connect with these affirmations so we could clear your energy. I release all negative energy from my body and energy field. I lovingly let go of all energy that no longer serves me. I am surrounded by positive, loving energy. And lastly, I am rooted in the present moment and connected to the earth. All right, so that's to help ground our energy into beautiful Mother Earth. So before I get started with tarot, all right, you picked the ghost here, all right? So I'm going to just put that over here. Again, this is from the Halloween Oracle, and we have the ghost. Uh, and the key word here is regret. So there's some strong feelings I feel coming from your person. There's something here that they are regretting, whether it's words, whether it's actions, whether it's something they didn't do or something they did do. I can tell you right now, they're filled with regret. And let me just read from the poem before we get started. Like smoke rising from the ashes, a mist from the sea, the dead they are watching, they have come to haunt me. So this person feels like you haunt them, pile three, all right? I feel like there's some strong feeling here of something that, um, and you're talking about that rising from the ashes, almost like that transformation energy. So it's possible that your person has gone through some sort of trans transformation, some sort of change. OK, something um, to that degree where they look back on this situation that the two of you experienced. And there's something here that they feel regretful about. OK, so let's get into tarot and see what else. And, and it's interesting because the way I'm looking at this ghost, you know, because she's looking at the the smoke, the ashes that are rising and, you know, looking up, which to me is is giving that sense that there's some recognition here um, when we're talking about that divine and spiritual energy that your person may be dealing with or facing now uh, that they didn't, you know, they didn't see perhaps um originally when it came to you so there's something that they feel like they see more clearly now let's see could find out what that is or what exactly it is that they're regrettable about today i am using the crow tarot
trying not to shake the table. All right. Let's take a look here for pile three spirit. What is it that their person wants them to know most? Ooh, the two of swords. The king of wands. And the Ace of Swords. So as soon as, you know, the to me, as soon as I see the Ace of Swords, uh, we're talking about truth. We're talking about clarity. Okay. Uh, the opportunity, I feel, you know, with this card in the future position with that Ace of Swords, it's almost like your person has truth or clarity. They would love this opportunity to clear something up with you. All right. There's something that they want to get off their chest. And I feel that, you know, the past is showing me the two of swords where that there was indecision there for the longest time. There's indecision about something that your person needed to say or needed to clear up. And they didn't they didn't, you know, take that opportunity to do that. And now we have this king of wands sitting here. And I feel that your person is gaining that confidence that there's something here that they're ready to speak their truth about, you know. And you have the lion here showing me that this person's feeling very strong, um, very strong and passionate about this decision in wanting to actually... Uh, Clear the airway is is what I'm feeling here. Now let's see what else. And they feel that they need to do that pile three because they feel invisible right now. And maybe that's because they ghosted you, right? Maybe they ghosted you. They, you know, they stopped communicating with you or... You tried communicating with them and they never answered you or they just quietly disappeared from your life, you know, and and left you feeling um, even that that feeling that you feel you have felt invisible, you know, like they didn't see you anymore. Now, here we have the Ace of Pentacles. <clears throat> And here's the sun. Wow, two sun cards with that king of wands because that's um, Leo energy that we're talking about. And then we have the sun here. And the queen of cups is here. All right, that, that beautiful cancer energy. So again, there's something very strong that... You know, your person recognizes that what's coming through is your person recognizes that you could have made them very happy. That's that's what I'm feeling. That's what I'm picking up on right now. The sun, this joy, this beautiful optimism. They would love this opportunity with the Ace of Pentacles. You know, they would love this opportunity to create something new in this, pre, you know, this present moment or here now, you know, not just talking about um, connection or energetic connections. There's something about uh, being here on this earth and, and would open the arms for uh, being able to have this opportunity to feel this sense of joy and happiness and completion with with you. And here is uh, this Queen of Cups, right? This Cancerian energy. Um, and with the water in the background, you know, I feel that you're very emotional. Um,
there's a sense to me with the moon here, you know, um, I don't know if, if you're secretive or, you know, there's a sense of like mystery, like as almost as if your person doesn't recognize right now what it is that you're feeling or or thinking when it comes to them. All right. Very interesting. And they know that you're a very um, compassionate soul, very sensitive And very understanding. I feel like you were always very understanding of this person. And, um, you know, now they're truly recognizing that. We have the starfish here representing. We have the crab in the water. Um, Queen of Cups. They're never afraid to wear their emotions um you know they wear their heart on their sleeve if you've heard that saying before they're not afraid to discuss emotions and feelings light of pentacles the fool Queen of Wands. Okay, so your person is getting ready to change something about themselves. Ooh, there's the Nine of Swords is on the bottom of the deck. So there's definitely some heartache that this person um, is dealing with. Uh, Nine of Swords represents those sleepless nights. So I feel like this is something that's been on your person's mind for a while, wanting to... Uh, Take the reins here and to, you know, really step into this king of wands um, and come towards uh, you, you know, seeing you as this match, this queen of wands, you know, queen of wands is very. Um, charming, they're, you know, queen of wands energy, you know, she usually gets what she wants. Um and yet I see the two lines down here and the one line up here. So it's almost feeling like, you know, this person wants to head towards you. Like they see you as as this uh, match. Um, you know, they feel that passion when we're talking about the wands, that fire energy. They want to take this leap of faith. That's what they're feeling. And yet we have the Knight of Pentacles here. So I feel like they're being rational about it. You know, they're taking things slow. Um, I feel like they're trying to be practical when it comes to this situation, you know, so as much as they feel like they know and they have some clarity, okay, regarding you, they're also trying to be practical and realistic in whatever's going on in your life at this moment. But look at this un under here in the bottom, uh, I just picked up the card and we have the world card. So I do feel, yes, like your person's feeling like there's a regret because there's unfinished business here that um, needs to be dealt with at some point. And when you look at the world card here and we're talking about that completion of a cycle and you have the two infinity signs, you know, one at the top and one at the bottom, I often I like to explain this is like here's when you met your person and it's almost like you both have to go off onto these separate journeys until you know it is that time where you can reconnect again but uh I can say pile three that you know yes you have definitely been on your person's mind and what they want you to know right now is how much um they would be happy with this sun card here if the two of you were able to reconcile and communicate with each other again. Okay, so before I read from the book, let's get the beautiful amethyst pendulum. Now, what I want you to do is I want you to ask a question about your person. Um, I want you to be specific as you can, all right, because when we're asking questions like this, um, it's best to be clear and concise and specific if you want to get an answer. Um, the more vague you are, the chances are that 
uh, spirit would not want to answer the question, which I've seen before. Okay, so uh, spirit, this is for pile three. We are asking what is the answer to pile three's question? Okay, that's interesting. The answer is no. And it feels pretty strongly. So whatever your question is right now, the answer is coming up as no. All right. I know for pile two, you know, when I dropped it, it, it was very shaky and wobbly, which made me feel like, um, you know, that's not strong. This This dropped and was pretty strong as far as um wanting me to feel what the true answer was to your question so let's go back and let me just read about the ghost before i close out this reading all right so we're yes yeah, so as we're talking um about ghosts here Uh, ghosts can be both people that we have known who visit to assist us or the presences that are bound to a particular place because they have found it difficult to let go even after death. Um, the concept of the haunted house or the cursed place is the basis for many creepy ghost stories, lots of paranormal activities. Um, in fact, the most interesting ghost stories often involve a very angry or destructive spirit. Okay, that can scare us and, and sort of wreak have, uh, havoc on someone's life, if that's the case. And here's just the old Norse word for ghost has the same root word as the word fury. Okay, so let's just see here. Should the ghost come gliding into your life during, during divination, it may indicate that you have some regrets to let go of. Holding grudges or regrets is burdensome work, and it weighs us down eventually. By taking actions to free ourselves of those old burdens, we clear the way for more rightful and wise actions for the future. We can begin to live again fully if we let go of what was and step into new possibilities. And pile three, I feel like that is something that you may be trying to do right now. You may be trying to step into those new possibilities, okay? And you've been carrying regret because of the way things ended with this person. Um, just regret in general or regret on your part for something. Regret that your person, because you feel that your person should have done something and they haven't. And really what Spirit's trying to say is that it's not worth carrying the pain of this regret. You know, it's time to clear that energy, clear, you know, a clean slate is what I'm feeling. A clean slate is required here. And then taking action from that, you know, not holding on and clinging to whatever happened in the past. But if there's something that um, occurred that you can learn from, you know, that's that's the important part and that can be very much where your person is right now that they're they're learning from um whatever the situation was that uh occurred between the both of you okay so i'm going to leave the reading here for today uh thank you so much for watching and i look forward to having you at the next reading okay bye